Welcome to Production Value Matters, the business event podcast, brought to you by Burn Production Services. Here, we explore the different ways business events can bring value to your organization, the latest technological advances in the event space, as well as providing you with actionable strategies to make a business event a success. Let's create an exceptional event experience. Welcome to another episode of Production Value Matters, the Business Events Podcast. And today I am really happy to uh, welcome James J.P. Fleeg to the podcast. Welcome, James. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you have a pretty elaborate career so far. Why don't you tell me about how you got to where you are now? Great question. Uh, it's, it's been fun, to say the least. Um, but I'll get started. I was really lucky Uh, in like seventh grade, I knew what I wanted to do and that was events. Uh, The ultimate picture was to create a snowboard music festival. That was one of the first visions I had. And with that, at the time I was uh, a snowboarder. Uh, I, I was sponsored at the time, soon eventually became a professional snowboarder years later, but I was going to a lot of competitions and I was also kind of an event guy. And I was like, well, you know, I think we could do these better uh, to a degree. Uh, so fast forward to college. I was the business manager for the college radio station. We did a lot of fundraising and concerts uh, and more. And, and that just led to to more events uh, with the university, putting on concerts. Um but always been uh, been networking, you know, throughout. Staying in touch with people has been a huge, huge thing for me. It's, it's something I take a lot of pride in um, and, and has opened a lot of doors. Uh, but throughout that, um, I, in college, I uh, ran these, these fundraiser events. And then I was staying in touch with uh, a guy at Burton Snowboards. He used to do events for Burton. And I email him. And he's, I'm about, I'm about three months out from uh, graduating college. I email him and no response. And then uh, a month later, uh, I get an email from him. He says, if you can meet me in Seattle uh, in 12 hours, then I'll give you a chance for an interview to do events with Burton Snowboards. And at the time I was like, okay, I had five buddies on the couch. And I'm like, you guys want a free trip to Seattle? I'll pay for the hotel. Let's go. And uh, no indication that I would get the job while I was there, but uh, eventually getting the job and then ran around campus when I got the news, was really excited. It was a dream job. And then from there, uh, I started a festival in college. Uh, So before I graduated, I got this Burton job and then I wanted to do one more big thing before I kind of got into the the real world. And I started a festival called Shred Fest. And that was the ski and snowboard winter kickoff festival. Um, I started that with two grand credit card and uh, two grand cash. And um, we ended up having to fundraise for the city to allow us to do it. And it all worked out. And uh, and then from there, I just started Go Inspo and uh, it's, we're event staffing and it's been, uh, it's been amazing. So, um, you know, a lot of the people that listen to this podcast and uh, and uh, participate on the podcast a lot are event producers. So, you know, you're coming from the perspective currently uh, as an event staffing company through GoInspo. And so, you know, what what do you think event producers and event organizers need to know about working with an event staffing company? Yeah, of course. Um you know, as I was mentioning is is networking, is having those networks in that client base between staff around the country, uh, staying in touch with them, uh, as well as understanding, uh, you know, their skills and their passions. So finding staff that's passionate about a certain product or brand or maybe sport or tech or whatever it may be, you know, maybe we'd want them to staff those events. Um, but the two similarities is, is being resourceful. I think at the end of the day, being a producer, you need to be resourceful and source items, uh, catering vendors, security. And let's say with a staffing company, you know, we want to curate the best staff for that project. Um, one with staff that have similar 
um, passions for that project or that certain look that maybe a brand is looking for. Um, and then, you know, vetting them out to make sure uh, whether they're local or they're going to be traveling in, are they going to run into some issues on their travels or, you know, finding that good balance. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, going further into that, you know, in initial client meetings or when somebody's reaching out to you initially to say, hey, I need staff at this, you know, brand event, you know, what are those initial client meetings like? Like what kind of information are you trying to get out of the producers and what can they be offering you to make that process smoother? It's a great question. Love that. So, you know, first and foremost, there's usually an NDA involved. So, you know, hopefully I can get an NDA signed and then they can start telling me more about the project. Because once I get the email, I get honestly pretty excited about it. It's like, we need X amount of staff for these dates, this location. That's almost all I know. But then a lot of times we know that production company, who some of their clients are, say Spotify, Netflix, Apple, whomever. So maybe we do a little research to see if there's some events coming up in that location. And we can kind of try to figure it out beforehand because we want to start putting feelers out there right away to those local staff that we know. We're trying to get in touch with those rock stars. Like when are their brand ambassadors or production assistants? We want to get in touch with them ASAP. And the second we tell them about a date and a potential happening, they'll maybe throw that into their calendar and we can kind of have their lot block out their time. So that's, uh, that's a big part of the call. And then, of course, those minuscule things is parking included, our meals pr provided, uh, lodging or travel. That's very important for our staff to know uh, whether we need to plan for that or not. Um, and then if that NDA is signed and they're able to share the production deck or whatever it may be, then we'll, uh, we'll curate our team just for that. And most of the time, it's pretty cool our clients just trust us to understand the project and the look and vibe and feel they're going for. And so uh, we kind of curate our teams um, to that without them having to really say, we need this exact vibe. And I think that's really cool and maybe stands us, us out from, from some of our competitors. Yeah. I really like that uh, idea of the curation, um, you know, which I think is really important for staffing agencies like you to be able to add to the value of that conversation. Cause otherwise, you know, it, it is sort of, um, you know, that is sort of maybe the secret sauce that you guys bring uh, yeah. in, you know, we, we just talked about some of the logistical concerns, right? Parking and number of bodies and hours per day and location like those. Those are sort of practical effects. But, you know, tell me how you're working with producers and event organizers to sort of really, truly understand you know, the difference uh, in that curation for the type of people you would uh, bring into an event. Of course. Of course. So we like to have a nice mix of folks. You know, it's it's really cool to have our vets and our rock stars. We can count on them. They're great leaders slash managers. But there's also a really powerful thing about bringing in some young green uh, or some greener, meaning, you know, newer to the industry or and so on. And, and we find some of those newer folks in the industry, we work with a lot of the universities, uh, whether it's their entertainment clubs or even their Facebook groups, or we did a, an event with PGA and the PGA Championships, the men and women's we did luckily this last year is a great opportunity. But our strategy was to bring in, you know, some great uh, local rock stars. And then we were lucky enough to fly in a few as well, some veterans. And then we chatted with the college group, uh, the golf team, and they were just astonished by the opportunity to to get to participate. And of course, you got to find that balance uh, with um, with you know if they're overly passionate, then maybe that's going to be a distraction to their job. And so that's part of that kind of interview process uh, is trying to you know, uh, vet, uh, whether they're maybe too passionate or excited about it, um, uh, where would it affect their job? Cause that first and foremost, we're there for our clients, staff, and our team, uh, to just make an incredible event. Yeah, absolutely. And so when you're, so let, let's take that situation where you went off to the golf club at the university, right? What kind of skills and qualities are you trying to vet out of them or, or sort of tease out of them as individuals to, to be the right role whether that's a, uh, you know, a brand ambassador or registration staff or whatever that might be, 
Uh, are there particular qualities you're, you're looking for whenever you're uh, trying to curate those people? Yeah, great question. Um, what kind of helps is if there's a captain of a golf team or, or you know, if they have certain, um, you know, a lot of times in the in these athletic clubs, there'll be there'll be others there'll be other team members that are maybe the event organizer, you know, that maybe helps with doing all their travel. Or maybe that helps with uh, certain aspects of maybe treasury, right? Uh, you know, maybe there's a travel budget that someone looks over, almost like a fraternity too or a sorority. Um, you know, there's they have a lot of them have their own roles already, so we kind of try to understand that. And I think the first and foremost is the um, you know the leadership and management. If 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 a college student is already kind of gung ho in that next step of trying to be a manager, or a leader of some sort of group, then you know, we're interested in, in working with them um, just just so they understand because there's a good chance they have experience working uh, events or working with some high level um, opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And so now you've sort of identified the right people uh, and with some good qualities. Um, let's talk about training and like a your internal training uh, that you do with uh, these people that you recruited and what you need from event organizers and producers to get them prepared and, and give them the right training to work with a brand or with a, an event property. Yeah, of course. Um, so, you know, our projects sometimes will staff brand ambassadors, production assistants, labor all throughout the project. Other projects, it'll be just labor, just production assistants, just brand ambassadors. Now, if it's brand ambassadors, we want the brand deck, which would include some programming, hours of operation, where to park, the vibe of the event, and we'll do a training with the client directly through there. And then when we're working with our production team and our labor, we share the production deck and all the programming we possibly can um, to uh, to ensure that they they just know what they're, they're gonna see out there. Uh, we usually do a half hour to one hour training, minimal, um, that kind of comes with our package, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and then we try to get as many staff on that call as, as possible. One is to show face and be able to recognize each other on staff and already create that community and that, that kind of good vibe before they even come to site. Um, so we always do a Zoom call or a Google Meet, and we just go over little questions that anyone has. Um, and then again, just show face. We always start uh, a group text with everyone and everyone's mandatory to do selfies. Um, like selfies with the big stick or just, or just like a headshot, just a headshot, you know, so sure. when they get to site, they can recognize each other. Um, and then we have a list. If you're going to name the list of, we have like top 15 rules when you get to site. And then we have like top five, uh, little tips that we like our team to work off of. And, and to be transparent, we're working on a video right now that talks about our safety and event tips that all team will be required to watch uh, prior. But uh, yeah, that's fantastic. And so, you know, uh, there's there's sort of six keywords that are keywords. I'm, I'm too, too much into Google marketing right now, but uh, sort of elements uh, that uh, through my research about your company, you you sort of concentrate on, which is uh, in integrity, inspiration, transparency, diversity, adaptability, and empowerment. Can you can you tell me a little bit about that philosophy and why those are the qualities you are looking for in your event staffing? Yeah, of course. So you know, integrity. If if you say you're going to do something, do it, um, and that goes with our on-site team as well as our internal team. And I think what that means is that. If you maybe you're not going to be able to meet a deadline, let someone know. You know, uh, just simply, hey, I'm 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 just swamped right now. Do you think I could get some help? Or I have some questions. I might not meet this deadline. Can can someone jump in and help? Or can you help me answer some questions? And that's kind of where the integrity comes into place. And then, of course, as simple as um, you know, showing up on time, and and uh, that's kind of where our integrity comes from. Uh, so transparency, you know, is always number one. As we know, you're not going to, you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to sneak around budgets. You're not going to 
um, you know, uh, try to work in overtime and not tell the client, you know, things like that. It's always, if you're about to hit overtime, you need to get that approved by the client. If, if there's an extra cost that you're going to incorporate, it needs to get approved. Obviously there's that balance of understanding, um, you know, if someone's really swamped and things just need to happen. Yeah. Make it happen. But we try to have a team that, that makes that best judgment. Um, and then it's always, you know, no hidden fees in our estimates. Everything's laid out there as much as possible. Uh, and then that goes with our team. You know, how many breaks are you going to get, um, et cetera. And it would be as transparent as possible uh, to our team, you know, per diem provided or, or whatever it may be. And so uh, when it comes to something like diversity, are you concentrating uh, specifically on um, advising clients on more sort of diverse members of the event staffing team, um, you know, uh, and I go back to the sort of the world of car shows where brand ambassadors were sort of, um, you know, an integral part of, of any car show, right. That it would always be, um, yeah. uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, blonde white girl, uh, who was standing by the cool car. Right. And so, how are you advising clients on that diversity uh, now? Is that is that something that you guys concentrate on? Yeah, of course. Um, that's something we take a lot of pride in. And I think it goes back to our clients trusting the, the people we're going to pick. And, and of course, we have our database of headshots and uh, experience that we can share with clients, of course. But most of the time, our clients just trust us to to make that decision based on the product that's being launched or service being launched. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all dependent on that that party and the vibe and the guests and the staff that's going to be experiencing that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, we're a couple of years past the. Um, uh, the pandemic and we are, uh, the, the whole world seems to have changed, uh, and the whole market, you know, labor shortage has been one of the biggest challenges of the event industry as it's returned over the last couple of years. Yeah. You know, um, I think you, you, you may have put something on fa on LinkedIn about the, about some technology that you're using to help solve that problem <clears throat> for yourself and for clients. But how are you dealing with that labor shortage? And is there any sort of insights you can help uh, the audience with? Yeah, of course. Um, well, for one, uh, you know, being to adapt, right? That's like that's the biggest thing is we're we're always continuing education with our team, um, whether that's participating in panels or doing courses or certificates or whatever that may be. Um, so that's that's number one is is not being kind of stuck in your ways and that and that's what's going to get us kind of through the the obstacles that life brings for sure. Um, but we use all sorts of AI tools um, uh, throughout the process. Obviously, a lot of Chat GPT, um, Smart Funnel, you know, records your meetings and um, makes them uh, more. Uh, they it breaks them down into a summary. Um, but all sorts of uh, tech. And then we use a, uh, a portal. It's called Staff Connect. Happy to share that. And uh, it's basically like an internal Facebook. And uh, you can do everything on it. Our team can invoice. They can um, say their skills, say where they're located or where they'd be willing to travel. Um, all their paperwork, um, their headshots, their their everything like that. And then we also are able to rate them internally too. And so that's kind of a really cool feature because, you know, if they're a rock star five out of five, we almost, you know, if we feel like they're the right fit for, you almost only need a five minute phone call and then the training and, and then they'll just show up and you're like, we just count on them. Um, so that's a really cool feature that's in that, um, that software um, interface. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I always love those kind of systems that are able to solve problems that clients don't think that they may have, right? And, and I think one of the biggest values that an event staffing company can bring is that consistency of performance, that consistency of quality, but no matter where you go. 
Uh, and cause you know, if they're, you know, you're brand X and you, you're in New York and you know, the New York market really well, that's, that's not necessarily a challenge, right? But if you're now trying to take your brand and your message and your look and feel of your event and take it out to California, uh, you know, having a database like that and, and having something that you're able to tap into and maintain that large database, it, uh, I think puts you in an advantageous point. Uh, so uh, that, that's very cool. And so, you know, I want to go sort of back to uh, ShredFest uh, and, you know, your beginnings, because, you know, that's sort of, you know, after, uh, after sort of diving into the events world, you sort of built that as, a, as an experience. How is that sort of uh, informed how you approach event staffing? And uh, yeah. is there like a big connection between that story and what you're trying to fulfill uh, with the value of that? Of course. And a big part of ShredFest was cool because we, you know, was being able to teach and give people opportunity to work in the event industry or entertainment that they want, that they wanted to. And that was a big passion of ours, just seeing our team learn and grow. Um, but with with Treadfest, I to, that gives us kind of that competitive advantage in the staffing world is our team's experience. You know, we our team comes from like executive producer experience, high level HR management, um, high level you know f festival owner. You know, I did every broad, everything under the sun with the festival. Uh, it started with nine hundred people, and then we grew to five thousand per day. And so with that, you know, we understand every aspect of an event from locations to permitting to budgets um, to staff, security, safety. And so we don't just know like the staffing and like the, the brand guide. We, we know literally everything that these producers are going through on the day to day. And so we're there to, to, to adapt and be resourceful with them. We're, we're part of their team. We're not going to just sit there and do nothing. We're going to be cleaning up trash while we're hanging out, you know, whatever they, they need us to do. Um, we've kind of been able to do and, and understand. Um, so I feel that's, that kind of is really cool to bring that shred fest, starting a festival from the ground up into go inspo. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you're handling quite a lot, you know, shred fest and, uh, and go inspo. So, you know, uh, a couple of times on previous episodes, uh, we've been talking about, you know, the right work life balance. And so how are you avoiding burnout? Like, how are you keeping a good balance of that? I love that question. That's the best. I think it's, it's so easy to, cause you know, we're at the mercy sometimes of our clients and, uh, but and able to perform and do the best we can, we need to have our personal time and our therapy and our routines. For me, I, I have all sorts of little tricks that I like to do. Number one is uh, you wake up, you make your bed, of course. That's, that's, a, that's a golden rule. Number two is you don't get coffee unless you stretch and visualize the day. Coffee is a luxury item in my eyes. And so I love it. And so in order to do that, I must stretch and like visualize the day or else I don't get coffee. So every day I stretch and visualize. So that's really important. And then of course, a big glass of water because you just slept for eight hours, not drinking water. Um, and then a pour and of course, seven to nine hours of sleep. I know on event days and stuff like that, we don't get that. But uh, outside of the week, you need to get seven to nine hours of sleep. And then on that self-development side, you know, we are always trying to grow our companies and do everything within the industry. And I think that's amazing. And, and I love it foremost and i could just suck into doing that forever but i know for for self-development in order to have quality staff and team is is personal development and when i choose that is as tired as we we may be but is when we're flying is to that's when continuing education reading a book uh, pulling out your kindle because obviously it's really easy to just work or it's really easy to throw on a movie but for me i try to be so disciplined that when I'm sitting there on that plane is my time to have my Kindle in my left hand, my phone notes in the other, and I'm, you know, taking notes per chapter and trying to uh, do that. And then of course, um, uh, doing family trips and uh, eating as healthy as, as I can. And then one big thing is 
is maybe belong to a franchise gym and they're located all throughout the country and you can just squeeze in there real quick um, between events. I know it sounds crazy. You're on your feet for 17 hours, but maybe there's a loadout day that you can squeeze in there or load in day that you have extra time. Um, my personal choice is core power. It's yoga and, and sweating out all the bad stuff. Uh, so that's what I personally choose. Yeah, I, uh, I, there's an LED technician that I work with uh, across the U.S. And uh, he, he's, he's a big proponent of that. He will go and climb a LED screen and make sure that every tile is worked and probably work like an eight hour, eight hour straight climbing uh, truss and LED screens. Yeah. And, then was, and then he'll immediately say, okay, I'm going to go for a five kilometer run and then I'm going to go to the gym for an hour. And I was like, God, aren't you tired? He's like, I'd be more tired if I didn't do that. And I was like, yeah. oh, fair point, fair point. And I, yeah. and I really like what you just said about, uh, about the reading on the plane and uh, or that continuous learning. It, it's, uh, you know, in throughout my career, uh, this is something I always ask somebody when they come onto the team. I say, how are you refining your craft and uh, and how are you doing that constantly? And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I'll give an example of a sales guy uh, that I hired and gave lots of money to many years ago because his answer to that question was, well, I just read this book on sales and this theory and this thing. And whenever I have the opportunity, I'm trying to learn. And uh, I think sometimes in this business, we get to a point in our career where we're like, oh, I figured it out. I got my certification. I'm the, mm -hmm. the person who does the thing. Right. Right. But you're, you're doing disservice to your teams or your clients or, your, or yourself, really, if you're not continuously feeding yourself with just as much mental nutrition as you would, say, you know, uh, physical nutrition. Yeah. One hundred percent. So uh, we're just running a little bit short on time. So I'll just wrap up with a question I always like to ask people uh, on this. Um, you know, knowing that there's event producers and uh, event or organizers listening, we like to give a practical step. Uh, so when it comes to event staffing, what do you think event professionals should do right after this episode as a first practical step to uh, uh, make their event staffing? Uh, needs communicated better or working with staffing companies better uh, or finding better staffing? Okay, great question. Um, well, we are goinspo.us, so uh, you can give us a shot. Uh, we, can, we can start small and then maybe do a bigger project. Uh, you know, so no big, crazy commitments. You can try us out uh, for one. But of course, there's a lot of great staffing companies out there, and, and we'll even partner with some of them um, just depending on the market and situation. But, you know, is to understand that um, our brand ambassadors and our team, uh, PAAV, that we are, a lot of folks have a lot of different experience and skill sets that you may not think just because their title is stagehand doesn't mean that they can maybe even jump in and be a producer for a moment if, if, if needed. So kind of be having that open mind uh, to your team on site um, but as far as, you know, that next level of staffing is try to get all the information you can from the client uh, and forecast, hopefully, the production schedule as best as you can. Uh, and, you know, the, the least amount of changes is always a plus um, prior just so we can give you the, the right quotes and the right people and et cetera. So trying to kind of limiting uh, those emails uh, is always is always a, a bonus uh, for us to really focus on curating the best team more so than changing uh, a lot of different aspects of that recruiting process. Um, yeah. Well, well, thanks, James. And, and how can people find you? I, uh, obviously, Go Inspo uh, it, uh, is a way to reach out to you. Is there anywhere else that people can reach out to you to get in touch if they have questions? Uh, of course. So my email is jpflegge mm -hmm. at goinspo.us. And that's j-p-f-l-e-e-g-e at goinspo.us. And then my Instagram mm -hmm. is JP Fleggy, JP Fleggy, F-L-E-E-G-E. -E -E. And uh, yeah, we're excited to chat. And uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, have an awesome day. Yeah, thanks, James. Right, later, man. Production Value Matters, the business event podcast is brought to you by Burn Production Services. To find out more about Burn Production Services and how putting on events can drive value for your business, visit burnproductionservices.com.
Make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And on behalf of the team here at Production Value Matters, thank you so much for listening.